Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Ryan Pentley, and he is an author. He had just recently launched his book that he's going to tell you about, and he is a speaker, and he focuses on addiction and sobriety. And I'm very excited to have him on the show today. But before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to our Wellness Expo. They're going to be in Livingston, New Jersey, and they have over 100 exhibitors. They're looking for a few more exhibitors, and they're going to have plenty of natural products they'll be giving out. They'll have doctors and coaches there and different technologies available. So if you're thinking about maybe looking for a great expo, check out the Happy Wellness Expo in Livingston, New Jersey. Information will be in the description, and you can contact them or call them up and they'll be happy to answer any questions. So I am so excited to have you on the show, Ryan. This is an amazing topic. I love the topic of addiction, and I, I think it, we, so many people struggle in our, in our society, and a lot of people don't know how to deal with the different things that go on in their lives. So they look for different coping mechanisms to try to help them with what they're going through. And a lot of those coping mechanisms can be very unhealthy and some of them could be deadly. Now, before we begin and we get into that topic, I just want you to just introduce yourself. Tell people a little about yourself and what you do so they know who you are. Yeah, uh, so um, my name is Ryan and I, uh, I'm a self-proclaimed um, rock bottom alumni. I've been uh, to what most people consider uh, a solid, solid rock bottom in my life. Uh, some of these Low moments included um, uh, being wanted in a few states. Um, and my mother accused me of uh, trying to cut her head off and she had me arrested. It all sounds very bleak and I might come across like I take it lightly. It might be the way that I kind of deal with it, but um, you know, uh, I was homeless. It kind of goes, the list goes on and on uh, as far as these, uh, these, these times that are objectively agreed upon to be pretty much rock bottom. And, you know, I go over all that in my book. And uh, so anyway, I think uh, as Stacey and I, we were talking about before the show started, I, I, I think that people that find or uh, find the solution or gain traction in really difficult problems like addiction uh, and recovery, I, I think it's our responsibility um, or at least the best way to make um, good of a very dark uh, subject material in a very, very tough situation for anybody involved, and many people are. Um, so what do you do to, to make the most of that time, these dark times, these rock bottom moments? And I think that it's that you package it up and you try to help people that are in the same circumstances. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm, I'm attempting to do uh, these days, right? So I I got it uh, organized enough to be uh, on some pages and uh, yeah, um, it, it's, uh, it's, it, it seems like a solid purpose or at least making, uh, you know, uh, lemonade out of, uh, lemons. Right. So, yeah. uh, so here I am, I'm, I'm sharing my story. Well, I'd like to hear a little about your story, like what you went through and why you decided to go to drugs or alcohol to cope with your, your, um, your ways of, of, uh, I guess, trauma in your life. So, cause a lot of people go through a lot of stuff, but sometimes when you hear it from someone else and you hear their story, you can kind of connect. And I'd love to, to, if you could share a little about you and what you went through with the audience. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I mean, if you go back as far as um, how my family um, interacted with substances, uh, my mother and father, they're both, uh, uh, my mother currently is, uh, she's still battling addiction with the uh, prescription pills and, alcohol my, my father went down or he was on a similar path uh these relationships don't exist for me uh now um it will you know most of my life but um uh the the alcohol and, and drugs kind of really ramped up uh, as i moved out west i moved to las vegas i guess if you want to call it an epicenter of uh you know um uh, drugs and alcohol it's one of them <laughs> if yeah. not the epicenter so right. yeah I found myself at a young age you know um, out there and uh, many of the people close to me will will say uh, that um, uh, when I started with opiates uh, prescribed to me that was a turning point yeah um, and it kind of uh, you know I was a part of the opioid epidemic and mm -hmm. um, you know it, it was tough because it was just handed to me and I was told this is my medicine. 
Yeah. And so um, it, I've learned not to, to, sh- to shut the responsibility of it because at the end of the day, um, they were prescribed to me, but I put them in my body. Yeah. So I, I think I think that um, uh, many people will, will share, um, you know, being at that that time frame, they have probably suffered um, the same kind of a circumstance of having a doctor just hand over uh, very addictive uh, drugs, uh, you know, legally, you know, and so is that good? No, it's all awful, right? Yeah. Uh, what I've learned, what I've learned, though, is that I, I don't really, I don't place the responsibility on those doctors or anything like that. And well, so anyways, I guess if you want to call that a, um, a time frame was the Las Vegas uh, time frame. And then I moved to Colorado. And while I was in Colorado, um, my health, uh, the, the biological effects of yeah. the excessive drugs and alcohol, it started catching up to me. I found myself um, in a hospital where I was in a very small town, 6,000 people. The doctor in that town had told me, he said, hey, listen, man, uh, you know, I got to be honest, I think you have diabetes. And I was like, you know, I, I could care less about any kind of right cautionary cautionary tales i was busy i had things to do i had drugs to take and i had drug uh, booze to drink you know i was like yeah. i don't want to hear this story then i was in a diabetic coma about a month after that so i'm oh, in a wow. diabetic coma seven days i i wake up i'm looking around i had some very dear people with me or around me yeah and i don't know if i would have would have woken up had they not been there um then a lot of people they think okay well you're in a coma uh that's when you snapped out of it. That was the turning point. No, that really wasn't it either. So um, yeah. I found myself still in the grips of uh, the fight, the fight with addiction. Um, and so I came back to Florida. Things got a bit worse. Right. Uh, and, and at this point in my life, I, I couldn't afford the drugs anymore. So now it was just alcohol. And uh, I, uh, I limped along for a few years there. Uh, did a pretty good job of shunning and and pushing everybody that cared about me away. Right. Uh, found myself found myself homeless. Um, found myself incarcerated, uh, not prison but jail. Uh, yeah. I was, you know, I was definitely it was hard times. Uh, so and then you know, then I I looked around and I realized I, I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't I wasn't perishing. I wasn't dying. There were some times when I thought that I, that's what I wanted. Um, yeah. And then when it didn't happen, it's like, well, now what? Right. And right. Uh, it was time to get to work. Um, so, you know, that that's uh, that's kind of. Uh, um, I don't want to say on the other end. Right? right. Because there's always work, always work to be done. Yeah. Uh, but I made some pretty good progress. And so uh, I, I think that if, if uh, this story resonates with people and then they find that you know, hey, that, that some of those parts of my story align with their align with theirs, um, and they want to change it. Now I'm kind of creating a certain way, or at least some steps to take in the right direction. You know, right. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit of that's. I, I would say that's a pretty uh, uh, short synopsis of, yeah. of the last 15 years, I guess. <laughs> now, did you feel like you had it? Like when the change came, when you hit rock bottom, like what made you decide that, you know, I can't live this life anymore. I got to find a way that it, I can change my life around. Yeah. You know, I think most people like, like, like I, you had just mentioned, like at what point, what moment, I don't think any of it, whether it was the recovery or the downfall was such that it was like, okay, there it is. I can pinpoint it. Yeah. It doesn't exist either going down or coming up. Uh, mm-hmm. and cause people are like, Oh, well, when was it? When did, when did a lightning strike you? And, yeah. um, I think that as far as the, the downward spiral, it snuck up on me. Right. I, I, for the, for the life of me, I couldn't even tell you that I felt like I blinked my eyes and it had been several years. And I thought, how the hell did I end up here? Like, right. this is, this is pretty, pretty odd. This is awful. Yeah. Uh, and then at the, and then the same token, it wasn't all that quick for the, on the other end, it was, it was a culmination of a lot of very small wins, a lot of, a lot of very humbling uh, wins. Um, so, you know, many times people, uh, they might see me now and think, oh, oh, you know, he snapped out of it. 
it wasn't such, it wasn't so much that I snapped out of it. I just started somewhere. Right. I just started and it, and it wasn't nothing to brag about at first. I can tell you that. Right. And what would you say is for someone who is not happy with where they are in life and they are using different substances and, and different and alcohol to try to cope with the feelings that they're going through and to cope with their life, you know, cause they wake up in the morning, they don't like themselves. They don't like their life. They're not happy. You know, they don't know how to cope with stress. They don't, you know, we can name a, a million things, you know, what would you say? Step one is when someone is, do they, you know, how do they, how do they, what's the first step they have to do in order to try to get back on track and to order to get their life back in order? Yeah. Uh, so if, if they've, if they've come to the point and they realize that things have got to change, um, it, it's, it's very simple, but very hard, right? So it's not complex. In fact, it's, it's very, very simple. Right. It's almost so simple that people overlook it and, and they, they, they think that some massive change or event has to happen. And that's really not where it's at where it's at is like, um, you know, it, it's like I said, it's very humbling. And I'll tell you that for me, I, I, at one point it was 15 minutes. I, I would tell myself, I'm not going to pick up the bottle 15 minutes. I knew that in the, the state of my body that I would go with the withdrawals. I knew this was coming, but I knew I had to make it last. And I would have these talks with myself and I, and I would set myself a time, a timeline, like okay, 15 minutes. I'm yeah. not touching that bottle not going to do it. And I would fail. Right. I would fail. But eventually I did. it, And then eventually the 15 minutes turned into an hour. And so, you know, this might be cliche, like a lot of people might say, Oh, well, I've heard that before, but it's, it's just the, the honest truth. It's right. just really where you got to start. If that's what you're capable of. And, you know, I hope that people are not stuck at such a small point, you know, yeah. such a small win. I, I mean, I hope it's like, okay, you know, I, I have a few too many drinks on the weekend and then next weekend I'm not, you know, but right. that's a win. That's a win. And so then you just, you just start building these wins and that's really, it's really the, it's the formula, right? Yeah. Um, but many times people, they overlook um, those small steps or they maybe they undervalue them. Um, but really, if, if anybody's wondering where, where do I start? Um, that's, it's usually small. Right. it's almost always small it's almost yeah. always small yeah I feel like a lot of times you know we we have to go back to the root cause why are we using substances why are we using alcohol or drugs to cope with our problems and a lot of times I feel like it goes back it goes back to the, there's a root cause either the way we grew up either trauma in our lives or the way, you know, things happened, or, you know, you grew up in an environment, this is all you knew, you know, do you feel like there's a root cause? Do you feel like people sometimes go to substance abuse because of the things that in their lives, they just don't know how to cope with it. And they're just trying to numb it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, without a doubt, um, you know, and I, I, I kind of, uh, I asked myself this, because it's really tough to quantify, right? Like, yeah. Okay, both my mom and my father were addicts, alcoholics. So is that directly correlated to me doing this? Like, for instance, my father, I don't know my father. Right. I, I don't, I have never had a relationship, but here we have this uh, tether, if you will. So yeah. like how much of that, how much of that really dictates who I am? Yeah. Or is it like, or is it character traits that I share of both of them? Right. That make me likely that make me likely to do it. And so um, I guess for, in my mind, and there might be some research out there that says otherwise, but like, I don't, of course, I, I think that there's uh, definitely statistics that will say that children of alcoholics or drug addicts are more likely, but is it because that's what they see or are they, they observe it or is it, is it biological? Yeah. Right. So, and as I mentioned about these characteristics, uh, and I, I have this, um, this new idea that I've kind of kicked around on social media and things like that, but I, I'm, I, I'm starting to believe in it rather firmly yeah. is that um, being an addict is, it can be considered a character trait, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, but is it always bad, right? Think about it, right? Like, like <laughs> if 
you've got somebody who's like Steve Jobs was, right. was he addicted to, to innovation? Right. Right. Like, like was, was mother Teresa addicted to peace? Yeah. You know, like, so, so it's like, maybe, maybe it's not um, fighting against what we are, but maybe taking, taking what we're naturally inclined or the way that we're inclined to be. It's like, okay, yeah. well, if I'm going to be an addict, why don't I get addicted to taking care of my kids? Or why don't I get addicted to uh, going to church? Why don't I get addicted to reading? Or why don't I get addicted to like volunteering? You know what I mean? Like yeah. something like, you know, um, so I think that, uh, you know, if there, if there is a trauma, I, I, I think first and foremost, see a professional. I, like I had mentioned to you, I, I'm in school yeah. to try to like, to gain that skill set to help people with those types of things. Like, not quite yeah. there yet right it's like it's um it, it's a real thing and people people need to to work through it yeah. or or figure or figure out their formula to to cope with it yeah efficiently effectively right effectively right yeah so, um yeah it's uh it's it's a serious thing with the trauma um and you know uh it depending on the person because we're all unique we all have these complex issues and and I think that uh, the burdens that we carry from the past, uh, every, every situation is unique. And, and to, to treat those types of things in a holistic path, um, it, it's the way to go, but there's no, there's no one cure-all, right? Everyone right. has got, everyone has a, their special formula for, for, for dealing with it, you know? Right. I feel like sometimes it is it you know we get into these modes where it's bad habits and learn coping skills and and to kind of compensate for grabbing a bottle or grabbing drugs and being able to actually you know learn different ways of coping with stress different learn different learn how to deal with hostile put people or learn how to actually love yourself because I feel like after so many years of beating yourself up you probably people, I, I would say most addicts have low self-esteem. Most addicts don't love who they are. Most addicts have low confidence levels. And I think that it's probably important too, to build those things up and give themselves a little self-love. How do you feel about that? I, well, I, I lean very much so on the side of um, motivation, uh, motivation interviewing. It's, it's a, it's a type of counseling and it's like, it's it's feeding that self-efficacy that's gone people right. have people have forgotten what they're capable of and they haven't done anything in for a, probably a good a good amount of time yeah and so now it doesn't live in the belief in themselves is gone and it's it, it is there's very few things out there as sad as that yeah and i was i was there i i felt i mean you know i <laughs> I, I still wish for pray for to be useful Mm -hmm. to anywhere um yeah. and and really i've also noticed that that's really uh a key for people um when they're stuck in their own head and then yeah. actually even looking looking back to your last uh, uh question there about trauma it's like okay if you had a tough circumstance there's a good way to at least um <clears throat> get around it temporarily when i say get around it i mean like you know just get out of your head and maybe not be just drowning yeah. in, in sorrow be useful right go out help help someone anyone there's no shortage of people that could use a hand exactly. and so if you do that you find yourself kind of like getting out of your own vicious cycle and you're like you know and it could be it's very small again going back to like something small opening yeah. doors for people helping out somebody that you can see is struggling, uh, carrying something, whatever it is, these tiny little gestures or maybe bigger gestures, you know, right. show up and, uh, you know, uh, at some community and, and just lend a hand, you know, yeah. um, getting out, getting out of your head temporarily can really relieve some of those moments where you're just beating yourself down, beating yourself down, you're stuck in this loop. And then you, you think, well, there's only one thing to do here. I'm going right back to what I know will at least like make me forget it for 10 minutes or an hour. Yeah. Uh, but it, if you could just kind of just get a little bit of space and look around and say, you know what, maybe I'll call, call my mom, call my, you know, call somebody that could use a, a, a 
compliment or or just listening to somebody. Yeah. I mean, massive, just listening to somebody for an hour or something. And then, you know, of course that involves like just getting a little bit of space from your own, your own, um, your own fight, your own struggle. But um, I, I do think it's a, it's an excellent antidote um, mm. for, for those, for those dark moments, if it's possible. Right. Right. So, yeah. So for people who want to like sober up and achieve sobriety, what would be some steps and, and some, some tips that you'd like to give them that will get them on the right path? Cause sometimes you know, you look at, you look at, you want something, but you look and it's like a highway and there's like six lanes and you just don't know where to turn. Like for, for people who really want to sober up and, and have sobriety in their life, what would you, what would you tell them how to, how to go about it? Like some really helpful tips to get started. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, going back to like some of these cliches, they're cliches for a reason. Uh, most of the time, when they say admitting your that you have a problem is like the first step. Yeah, and and you can you can you can kind of rephrase it or reframe it and just like start gaining some some truth in your life. Yeah, start gaining some some honesty, and then there's many ways to go about that, right? Right. Um, if you if you do have uh, loved ones, friends, if you still have a support circle start asking questions um, right you and but you know be prepared like you may not want to know these answers mm -hmm. but you know ask them like hey have i been hitting it too hard yeah I, you know have i been if i've been getting out a lot of control what do you think now that's a tough question to ask and maybe not everybody's there yet yeah so maybe you start a little bit smaller you start with observations of yourself that might be a little bit more comfortable right and one of the best one of the best ways to do that is writing um uh, however that looks, even if it's just scribbling, you know, yeah. either at the end of the night, just kind of learn to get some space between um, just running through the daily actions and then mm -hmm. taking a step back and looking at yourself again at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, how did yesterday go? Or how did today go at the end of the day? Like where, where how many times did I, did I not tell the truth? Right. How many times did I think this way or that way? whatever that observation is. And yeah. this also includes good ones too. The observation alone will, get, will, it will immediately start course correcting your behavior. Right. Even if the bad habits are still there, even if the bad habits are still there, um, it, you know, uh, and then once you start kind of getting, uh, gaining a healthier perspective, you start orienting yourself a little bit better and just yeah. a little bit, because they will increase. Yeah. Um, then, then you just, start funneling that energy right uh funneling it like i had said into uh, being useful helping others everybody has uh something that they might be more inclined to and i think that's a key element too right like you know it could be useful like walking around picking up garbage yeah but if you don't really like it you may right. not continue that behavior so maybe find something that you enjoy that yeah. is say you're you know, you, you want to help, uh, you know, you, you're like, well, I don't know. I, I, I kind of get annoyed in crowds, but I really like dogs, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, you start, you know, walking dogs in the neighborhood, maybe put up a sign and say, Hey, I'll walk your dog, go down to a shelter. I'm not sure, but you know, yeah. if you start to lean into your uh, attention and, and we all know, even at the depths, even at the depths, even though as, as, uh, as void as you could be of like, true joy or happiness because it can rob you right substances yeah. can rob you of that there's still certain things that you kind of like it catches your eye yeah whatever that is and you're like oh damn you know well that looks fun <laughs> and maybe you're not a busy maybe you're not in a position to do it right away but right. like you know you, you, so again if you if you line those things up you know you start gaining some truth and you do that by observations of yourself you'll start to also notice what you're what you're kind of into yeah. Uh, and this might take, it might take some time, right. but, um, you know, really, you know, starting there, uh, is not a bad place to start. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. And when it comes to slipping up and, 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 and people falling into temptation and then, and then having slip ups, you know, how do you help people? Um, are any there are any suggestions? Do we let go of our friends? Do we start to just hang around people with more positive energy and decide 
who's really good for me? Who do I really need to maybe take a step back from? Or even family members, they might not be the best people to be around. Maybe we have to make some decisions. Who's going to be in my life and be a part of my life and who's going to not? Because to fall down and start from square one again is very hard for someone, especially if they're doing so well. And temptation can really be an easy way. You know, many people, you know, fall down many times, you know, but and so what are your suggestions for people who sometimes are just struggling? It's not, it's, you know, it's not, it's not coming easy to them every day. They're struggling not to touch the bottle or not to take a pill or not to take some type of drug. And what's your suggestions to those people? Yeah, it, it, it's a, it, it's a very interesting uh, point because uh, I had made a decision uh, along my, my sobriety path. And I, I thought to myself like, okay, well, do I have to go get all new friends? Yeah. Do I have to like, I, I really like my friends, but right. my friends happen to, they happen to drink and do cocaine and they happen to do these things. And I'm like, right. well, I don't want to just like get rid of them. I, I love them. So, yeah. so and, and it wasn't easy. And I'm not saying that everybody can go the exact same route, but right. in time I was able to become strong enough that I could be around them doing that. Yeah. And I, 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 I was all right. It wasn't always like that though, because right. uh, in the different, at different points in your journey, you have to, you have to uh, kind of take an analysis of where you're at. And yeah. so for instance, I knew I couldn't even walk by a liquor store. If I knew it was there, it was over. If right. I was within distance, I was going. Yeah. And I knew, I said, okay. And I'm talking like at one point I had to be like a couple miles. Like I, I would, I would figure out a way. My mind would like trick myself into thinking into a way. Well, I have to go by that way. And next thing I know I'm inside, outside, I'm drunk in a yeah. bathroom somewhere. So it's like, okay. I, at a point in time, I couldn't even be near them, like in the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, so you obviously want to set yourself up for success. And depending on where you're at, like you had mentioned your family members, not all family members are a good influence. So, um, you know, uh, that was actually, you know, when my mother and I, when we had a falling out and, um, and, uh, and, and she accused me of, of trying to murder her, we were both under the influence. Right. And after I had, you know, I had become sober because I was locked up, but like, you know, um, I actually gained a little space there. And I said, you know what, I got to stay away from her completely away from her and right. so that was uh you know and i'd like maybe in time for that to change but nonetheless that's where it's at right now right so you, you, again you know if you go back to these observations of yourself you start to gain a little space you start getting a little bit of truth in your life and and, and you work on it and you yeah. work on it and then you know in time I, I you know i pray that everybody would be be strong enough to where it's not even on their radar yeah. Um, and I'd like to say that it's kind of where I'm at now. Like, um, mm -hmm. you know, I can be in at it. I can be at an event. I could be in a bar. I could be at a social occasion and it's not on my radar. Right. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen overnight. Right. I mean, there was, there was, uh, you know, Christmas parties that where I was, uh, I was sober. Yeah. This is six years ago. I wasn't supposed to be drinking, but if anybody wasn't looking, I was taking alcohol. <laughs> it was, it's a bit, it's a bit humiliating, but yeah, yeah. you know, um, it, 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 but if, if you're out of position now, uh, you know, speaking to somebody that has a problem, right. you know, you will have to be honest with that, uh, situation. And, and if it's your mom or your best friend or, or wh whomever it might be, you right. might have to set up some serious boundaries, you know? Right. I mean? Yeah. And when it comes to enabling, a lot of times we have family members or friends who care about the person who's going through this drug addiction or alcohol addiction, but some people don't, um, don't handle it as well. They tend to enable and they pamper the person and that person, because they're a drug addict or they are a, um, alcoholic, they use that to their, their own advantage where they know, well, if I fall that person's going to be there. So I don't have to get sober. I don't have to improve my life because I know so-and-so is going to always be there and, and, and take care of me and I could just do whatever I want. 
And what do you have to say for those people? Because a lot of times what I, I, I have found from talking to people who are enablers, they, they just they have very caring personalities. They think they're doing the right thing. They love the person. They want to see the person, you know, um, be OK. But in the same time, their actions are actually hurting them, not helping them. What's your intake? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's it's so sad because uh, you know I, I had plenty of plenty of uh, enablers in my life, um, uh, and, and it was kind of a mixture too. Some of them actually had uh, similar problems that I did, right? So they, they're yeah. kind of like a teammate, you know. So yep. they're not only an enabler, but they were also ill themselves, right? Uh, and then you have you have people like my grandmother never touched any alcohol, never touch any drugs, nothing like that didn't yeah. curse, you know, she, that's who she was. Um, she was baffled by the entire thing. She did, couldn't eat for the, for the life of her. She couldn't understand why I wouldn't just stop. It was so bad. Why wouldn't I just stop? Right. Um, how, however, she still, she still enabled me and uh, she still, you know, uh, gave me food and, and, and she'd pick up my phone call kind of like, you know, she kind of let me limp along. Um, so, you know, for a person that's asking themselves, like, well, am I enabling them? Uh, if you are asking that question, the answer is probably yes. Because right. any level, any level of assistance, and you might even uh, consider somebody and say, oh, all I do is I drop off groceries once a week. That's what I do for them. No, it's, you know, it might be for them what they consider like a low level of help. And it's not drugs or alcohol, it's food. Right. And, and in, in, all, in all respect, it's an honorable thing to do. Right. However, that's, that may, might be uh, giving them more income to spend on drugs and alcohol. Right. So if and an addict will twist that around, they, yeah. they will figure out, uh, they will figure out a way to, get the groceries and go to the store and return it and get, uh, you know, whatever. If, there, yeah. if there's a will, there's a way. Right. Uh, and it's funny when I just, you know, I just mentioned that, uh, you know, there's a will, there's a way, um, I, you know, it might be kind of going back on what we were talking about, but like if, if, if you get an addict or an alcoholic and they're man they manage to take the ingenuity willpower and energy that they use to get a hold of their desired substance and they yeah. put it to something healthy unstoppable right. unstoppable like you sick an addict on 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 progress uh or, or some kind of a, a desire like an honorable goal they'll yeah. get it they'll get it because they, they, they their mind is you know conditioned to make it happen right and so i mean that's i, I wrote this book in six months Wow. Six months. Yeah, I, I mean, I was an addict. I was just pumping away. And that's what I, you know, that's an example of something that's like, okay, you know, it, it's a horrific situation to be an addict if it's heroin on the other side of the thing. But if you could somehow get to that other side and become addicted to something cool or useful or valuable or helpful. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little about this book. Tell me the title and tell, tell, tell my listeners the title and tell us all about yeah. what, what, what it's all about. Yeah, well, I'll show it to you here. Uh, it's called Man Up, Sober Up. So I got a little blurry there. Man Up, Sober Up. It's um, it, it's it's a, it's geared towards men, I think, because I'm kind of a guy. When I say right. that, I'm kind of a Guy, from a guy's am, perspective <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly so i thought i i thought i if i was speaking to myself right then I, I that's the way i'd be the most useful however uh th these uh these stories are dark for whether you know if male or female if you find yourself in the grips of these types of circumstances you you can agree on on all levels yeah um or, or if it aligns with with your life um it, it's it's entertaining in the in the fact that it's a lot a lot of stories um that are, might be a little bit scary that might be a little bit dark um but they're gripping uh but at the end of each chapter i i also turn a, you know flip that coin over and show uh like okay well if that's where you were consider this an actionable step something you can do right uh to kind of move away from that scenario that mm -hmm. we just went over right so um it, it's uh it's eight steps like that 
Um, they start with um, uh, real life stories about where I found myself throughout this journey, and then and then uh, some 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 ways that I started working my way out of it. Um, so yeah, uh, that, that that's that's pretty much uh, man up, sober up in a nutshell there. It's really when you use the term man up, it's just a phrase. It really could really relate to both female or male because it really, you know, I knew growing up people said man up and 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 it really you could say it to a guy or a girl, really, because it just meant to yeah. tie yourself up, you know, come on, you know, <laughs> you know. Um, so you really can go to either or, but you know, where can people find this book if they wanted to purchase it? I, I, you know, uh, you can go on Amazon. Um, I've got the Kindle version and paperback, or you can go to my website, ryanpenley.org. Okay. ryanpenley.org. Uh, pretty simple there. Just my name.org. And, uh, there's a link there. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, it, it's funny cause I, I've had like, you know, uh, like some people in like the so sobriety community and they're yeah. like, Oh, you're just trying to make so much money off your book. And like, it's not an expensive book <laughs> and it's not, it's not, you know, and that's not, that's not why I think anybody writes a book, right? It's no, like, uh, it, usually it's unless really... you're a, unless you're a class A actor or, you know, some, like some big celebrity, you don't really make money off of books. Usually you write books because you want to help, you know, and you're using your own yeah. expertise to help, you know, it's uh, you know, it's not really, books aren't really there to make money. They're really more there to help people. You know, that's the whole purpose. Yeah you know and yeah so yeah i mean really i just anybody that checks it out and they and they and they can um they like the message you know i and that's a win that's a win and I, that's that's really what i'm what i'm here for and i i saw that you have a contact button so if people wanted to contact you maybe ask you some questions or get some information about certain things they can contact you on your website where is the best place to contact you yeah there's an author there's an author contact uh form on my site um you know, I get to whomever, uh, whomever I can. And, and again, uh, like, like we were speaking about earlier, um, I'm working towards some other ways to like, kind of have a structured way of helping people. I'm, I'm actually in school to become a, a I'm getting my a master's degree for licensed counseling. I don't know what that looks like, but at the time being, like if somebody wants to jump on the phone and have a conversation, I'm up for it. Um, you know, I, I don't know, you know, if, if I can uh, be somebody's sponsor at, at this at this juncture, but I'll jump on a call and then I, at least I'll lend a year for a little bit and see and see what it looks like. Um, and, yeah. and that's one way to do it. If you reach out uh, through that author contact page, I'll email you back. Um, and so and that, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I wish I wish I had more of a um, more of a, a structure uh, on that on that front. But right now it's just like share the story right and there's yeah. anybody that buy anybody that can um that can relate you know i i do encourage you you know reach out to me I, I'd, I'd love it that sounds amazing that sounds amazing now if you had to take like a couple of takeaways and just like emphasize everything that we talked about today what are a couple of things you really want the listeners to walk away with <sighs> you know uh there's a few things uh I think most importantly, if your belief is gone, you, you gotta, you gotta one, know that it's possible, yeah. right? And two, fight like hell to get that belief back. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's, and again, it's not, it's not complex, but it's the hardest thing you'll ever do and the best thing you'll ever do. And so if you can put those things together, if you can, if you can, if you can grab some of these elements yeah. and start working on yourself and moving in the right direction. And I mean, just slightly, right. right? You'll in no time, you'll find yourself on the other side or at least in a better position than you were right. and thinking, damn, I, I've made a I've made some leeway and I, I'm getting some momentum and it really just starts, starts, start with something small and, and build that belief back that maybe, you know, it could have been taken away from you. Uh, it, it could have just been, you know, robbed from you from over the years of the substances, but it still lives there, right? So you right. just gotta, you just gotta get it back, work on it. And before you know it, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be starting to stride in no time. That's amazing. I, you know, I, I think today was like wonderful. I, I thank you so much for coming on the show. 
And I, I love your book. I, I really can't wait to read it. Um, it sounds amazing. And I think it's important because I think people, you know, many people struggle with addiction. They struggle with alcohol addiction. They struggle with drugs. They struggle with, you know, simply to compensate with food. You know, all addiction is very prevalent in our society. And, you know, many people use different types of addiction to cope with, you know, their emotions. But I think, you know, with your strategies that you talked about and you had mentioned, I think, you know, with any type of addiction, you could probably apply those to your life and have a constructive healing process begin. So I, I really want to thank you for coming out today. I hope we, you see you more on the show because uh, this is a topic that's very prevalent in our society and many people struggle from addiction. Some people are embarrassed to talk about it, but it's something that, you know, unless you reach out and 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 uh, talk to somebody, it's, it's going to be a very difficult time to actually heal. You know, it's, it's, it's something that could destroy a person if they don't get the right help. So, you know, I always say people aren't perfect. We all have something. And there's always there's for every every person out there. There's always someone out there who who's going through the same problems you're going through or went through those problems. And you know, I think people should never be shy about the the issues that they're going through in life and and to look for help. And there's many addiction um, facilities. There's many places that people can go out to. There's there there is AA meetings. They they have meetings for recovery. And you know, anybody that needs help, you know, especially you know, Ryan is always there. You can go on his website. Tell everybody your website before we go again. It's uh, RyanPinley.org. All you need is someone like Ryan just to talk to, and you know you can be on your way to a whole different new life. So thank you again, Ryan, for coming on the show. This has been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs>